For over 100 years, baseball teams have followed the same recipe when building a lineup. The leadoff hitter is the fastest player who can wreak havoc on the base paths. The three-hole hitter has historically have thought to be your best hitter. Fourth is going to be the big bopper who's looking to come up with the bases loaded, and the ninth is going to be your worst hitter, or the pitcher back when they used to hit in the NL. But what if I told you we've been doing it wrong this whole time? Analytics say the traditional batting order is inefficient, and that there's a smarter, more run-maximizing way to arrange your hitters. In this video, we're using WOBA, OBP, and RD24 to challenge baseball's traditional lineup construction and build the perfect modern batting order. If you're a casual fan, you might just think batting order is about the vibes. After all, everybody is going to get that at bat eventually, right? Wrong. The top of the lineup comes up to the plate significantly more over the course of a full season than the bottom of the lineup. In Major League Baseball, the leadoff spot gets around 750 plate appearances over the course of a season. The 9-hole might only get 630 to 650. That's potentially over 100 additional plate appearances for the top of your order as compared to the bottom. That means who you put at the top has a real impact on your run production, because they are coming up to the plate much more frequently. So, if you're placing your best hitter third, he's actually coming up to the plate a little bit less than he could. Let's start by laying the groundwork with the metrics that help us analyze a lineup's efficiency. First, we have on-base percentage, a pretty simple calculation that measures how often a player gets on base. Key for your table setters. You can thank the Moneyball era for helping shed the importance on this stat for lineup optimization. Then, we can utilize a stat like WOBA. Think of it as an upgraded OBP. It gives proper weights to walks, singles, doubles, and home runs. And if you're unfamiliar with this stat, check out our video on that subject on screen now. Then we have RE24, or Run Expectancy 24, which measures how many runs are created or lost based on specific in-game situation. For example, men on first and third with one out. You can then use this tool to see who comes up most frequently in high leverage situations. These ideas aren't theoretical. They're used by real front offices to build smarter batting orders. Let's talk about how. Starting with RE24. You want your best hitters up more often, yes, but also in the most valuable situations. That's where RE24, run expectancy based on 24 base out states, comes in. All this is, is a chart that shows us how many runs are expected to score during an inning in which a specific circumstance occurs at any point during that inning. I know that's kind of confusing. Let me dive deeper. By using the values given to us in the RE24 matrix, you can then compare how frequently a batter successfully adds to a team's run scoring potential through his at-bats, as well as see which position in the lineup comes up most frequently with those higher run producing moments. The reason it's called RE24 is because the combination of outs in base runner states equate to a matrix that is 3 by 8, or 24 total states. You can see on the chart here the different run values for each situation. For example, a runner on first with no outs has a .831 expected runs. If a player hits a single and moves that player around a third base, making the new base out state first and third with no outs, our run expectancy shoots up to 1.798, an increase of 0.967, which is almost one full run. However, if that same batter grounds into a double play from that original situation, the base out state is now no one on in two outs, which is 0.095 on our RE24 chart, a decrease of negative 0.736 runs. This is the same idea that goes into the values produced in stats like WOBA, weighted runs created, or weighted runs above average. How much does a certain outcome improve our team's expected ability to score more runs? Better hitters will help create better expected outcomes. You can use RE24 to answer the question of did this player add value in this moment or lose it? And you can take this all a step further to see which lineup positions come up most frequently with higher leverage situations and look to line up your best hitters there. Now taking a look at your traditional three hole is your best hitter standpoint. The old school approach says, put your best hitter third so he gets a shot with men on base. But statistically, that may not be optimal. The three hole often comes up in the first inning with two outs and nobody on. It actually has fewer opportunities with runners on base than the second spot, and meanwhile, the cleanup hitter often bats with the bases empty in the second inning. So if your best hitter is hitting third, you may be limiting their value. Now this is a little bit in a vacuum, but here's a modern sabermetric approach to optimizing your batting order. Your number one hitter should be your best on-based guy. 
doesn't necessarily need to be the fastest. You could think Juan Soto or Freddie Freeman, not 2006 Juan Pierre. Getting on base in front of your sluggers is the goal. You're looking for a guy who will get on base at nearly a 50% clip any way that they can. Think 450 OBP or above. Your two hole is going to be your best overall hitter. Yeah, your best hitter should go second. Why? Because they come to the plate more often than the three hole and get nearly as many RBI chances. Your example is that the Dodgers often bat Mookie Betts or Shohei Otani here for this exact reason. The three hole should be your next best hitter, not necessarily a slugger. You're thinking good contact, solid OBP, and some slug. This guy cleans up what one and two create, but doesn't need to be the big bat. Four is your best power hitter. Here's your traditional slugger. This guy can have some swing and miss, but when he puts the ball in play, you are looking for a very high slug. This is one that traditional lineup construction more or less got correct, even if it wasn't for the same reasons as teams do this now. You can think Matt Olson, Kyle Schwarber, or Pete Alonso. Your five and six holes, you can think protection and production. In the five hole, it's best for that hitter to put the ball in play frequently. If one through four are doing their jobs, you hope that the five hole is coming up with runners in scoring position frequently. Then six will then be your next available best hitter. That brings us to seven, eight, nine. Your worst hitters are gonna go last. But your nine spot matters too. With no pitcher batting in the AL or the universal DH era, this spot can set the table for the top. Some teams will even place a second leadoff type hitter here to loop that up to the top of the lineup. But in general, your three worst hitters will go in order, seven, eight, and then nine. But here's the thing. Your best hitter might not always be the same best hitter that you had yesterday. Baseball isn't played in a vacuum, it's played against matchups. So let's say you have player A, who hits 320 with a 400 OBP versus righties, but struggles bad against lefties. And player B is just okay overall, but he's your best hitter against left-handed pitching across all statistics. If you're facing a lefty starter tonight, player B may be your best option, maybe even hitting second or third. And that's just the beginning. MLB teams can go even deeper using pitch type splits. Who handles sliders, changeups, or high velocity as compared to what pitcher will be throwing that day? You can also look at pitcher specific history. Some players just see certain pitchers better. And Major League Baseball has the luxury of having some historical information on how their hitters have fared against opposing pitchers. Then there's also spray charts and pitcher tendencies. Optimizing your players ball and play tendencies to help maximize what your hitters do best against a certain pitcher. The bottom line, in the big leagues, the best lineup isn't static. It's a daily optimization puzzle, which leads us to platooning. Platooning isn't just about batting order, it's also about who's in the lineup at all. Your classic example is a left-handed batter with bad splits against left-handed pitchers, paired with a right-handed hitter who mashes lefties but isn't great against righties. By rotating them based on the opposing pitcher, you get the value of one good offensive player whose combined production is better than each on their own. Teams like the Rays, Giants, and Athletics have built entire rosters around platoon advantage. They don't ask who are my best nine players overall, they ask who are my best nine against this specific pitcher today. This is why strict batting order rules fall apart in modern baseball. Flexibility equals runs. Teams that have used optimized lineups, yes there are softwares built for this, gain five to 15 extra runs per season. That might not sound like much, but over 162 games, five runs can equal a full win. Sometimes the difference between a playoff spot and an early off season. And we've mentioned this already a couple times in this video, but smart teams aren't just aware of this, they're already doing it. The Dodgers often hit their best players first and second. The Yankees moved up Aaron Judge to the two hole to maximize his plate appearances. And the Rays and Blue Jays routinely experiment with lineups to squeeze out every run possible. This isn't theory, it's how contenders think. Because every single decision a team can make could be the difference between a championship or stranding the winning run on third base in an elimination playoff game. If you want to go even deeper into advanced player data, check out PitchLogic, the smart baseball that connects to your phone and gives you real-time metrics like spin rate, velocity, release point, and movement. Perfect for pitchers and coaches building smarter rosters. Use code SIMPLE for $25 off at checkout. And hey, if you'd like to support Simple Saber Metrics, check out our merch. You can find it on our website or in the store tab right here on the channel. Every purchase helps us bring you more deep dives into baseball stats and strategy. And if you like this video, check out one of the other videos on leverage-based bullpen usage, expected stats, and predictive modeling for lineups. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Simple Saber Metrics.